So uh, my name is Sigurd Kroll, and uh, I will talk today about Selenium and JavaScript, how to enhance your tests via JavaScript. So it's, I'm a bit worried, and uh, it's pretty unusual for me to speak in English, uh, even so far from home. Um, I'm from Belarus. Uh, by the way, who knows where it is? Okay, not so many people. And of course, uh, <laughs> it is uh, to the north of Ukraine and to the west of Russia. So <laughs> somewhere there. And uh, I'm working for Wargaming.net. Who knows uh, what we are doing and uh, what games we are developing? Okay, oh, so even more. <laughs> so we're doing uh, games. So we're doing uh, games which are related to War, actually, the most popular game, our game is World of Tanks. It's pretty popular, but mostly in Russia. Uh, but uh, friendly speaking, uh, I'm, not doing game, I'm not game developer. I'm doing all the things which is related to the web in game development. So all the thing is which is working with web, but is related to game, it is what uh, I'm responsible for. Uh, I'm doing test automation for lots of years already, dozens of projects in different roles. Uh, mainly, I can name myself as engineer, but tried a few different roles like trainer, consultant, manager, blah, blah, blah. Uh, working with Selenium for more than five years, I believe, from something like 0.9, I believe it was the first version which I've met Selenium. I've tried to share my thoughts uh, on the blog. Uh, unfortunately, English version is not so frequently updated, but anyway, if you will find something useful, I will be glad. So um, what I'm going to talk today about, uh, there, were, will, there will be two parts. One is like theory and some reasonings, uh, some general judgments, and uh, I will present you some practical cases how to use this idea on your practice. So firstly, um, I would like to show you this diagram about theoretical part. So it is the same as test pyramid, but a bit different way. So um, on the horizontal line, we have technical level. So the lower level is to the left, the higher level is to the right. and uh, uh, amount of support and amount of testing that you should have, it is a uh, red line and green line. So the lower tests we are writing, the lower technical details we are dipping into, so the less support we have, and uh, vice versa. So um, Naresh, a uh, few talks ago, already represented this idea in a proper way, in different way, but uh, I will not duplicate him. The, him. Uh, what I can see is that uh, the majority of the projects are focused somewhere here, so we're getting lots of support. That's why we can't wrote much of tests, etc. So I hope after my presentation, we will be able to do at least some shift, at least some. So I'm not trying to convert everything, but I will try to show you some practical steps how you can dig into technical details from the uh, level where we are right now. Uh, firstly, uh, first statement that uh, we should understand that UI tests are unstable. So we, I don't see any company, any projects where UI tests were constantly green, like unit tests. Unit tests are most more or less green, but UI, uh, if UI tests are green in 95% of times, it is great success, I would say. So uh, one of the reasons why it happens is uh, modern user interfaces. So uh, we are not in simple web anymore. We have uh, lots of these technologies, G GWT, jQuery, Sanchez, XGS, all this stuff is within our browsers and uh, we are trying to handle it uh, using our JavaScript, uh, our Selenium tests. Two, two features of this user interfaces. Firstly, they are complex, and secondly, they are asynchronous. So this is main cause of the problems. Uh, the, but it is not so good, so bad, uh, just because the modern user interfaces are based on prepared and already made components. 
So we are not uh, writing uh, lots of, we are not writing new jQuery on new, new GWT. So we are reusing it for our needs, we are providing them. Uh, so the main goal of reusage, if the problem wa was solved once, so our development world try to not to duplicate, not to solve this problem. Another one, that's why we have such many user interface frameworks. And uh, already made components, they could be less, less tested by ourselves. So we got some component which was developed by other guys, by, from open source, from, from some commercial framework anyway, but we got it already delivered, we got it already tested. That's why there is no need to test it by ourselves again. This guy is from Russian uh, fairy tale who is so lazy, he drive uh, this stuff. So, um, uh, custom, even if you wrote custom components, they could be tested separately, they could be unit tested. Um, I g provided one example of this framework, but there are lots of them, or some of them were mentioned already. So even if you wrote your own custom code in order to build your user interface, it could be tested separately. So using uh, lots of frameworks. But it is not what I'm talking about. Um, the next statement which I want to mention is the majority of the modern user interfaces has internal API. So it is API jQuery.com. It provides lots of methods. It's hard to even understand all this stuff. Uh, so you can do everything. And this API, uh, what is their benefits? They are built to interact with user interface components. When uh, someone developed a library, uh, the, it is not just library in vacuum. Uh, it is a library which should be somehow programmed. So they provided the API in order to interact with these components. And what is more better, this API most, in most cases is synchronous or there are methods, methods to synchronize. Uh, so we already, in addition to the already made components, we got API with these components. So there were lots of different statements. In order to summarize to what I said, we have um, a majority of our interfaces are based on some bricks. These bricks uh, can be left untested or tested separately, and uh, components has their own API. The, um, that API is more reliable than WebDriver API. WebDriver API is excellent, but it is not designed to interact with that, that, that particular components. So. Result, let's use JavaScript API instead of WebDriver. That's the main theoretical part of my speech. <laughs> so, um, life example, it is not just general speech, uh, there are proven cases by myself where it works. First uh, example I want to say about Oracle Sybil technology. Does anyone here know about Sybil? Uh, okay, it is commercial tool uh, with uh, closed source, but uh, this idea worked there. It's not about just some uh, funny, agile companies. It is about uh, pure commercial development for great company. So uh, the user interface of Siebel has uh, different characteristics. They, it has uh, lots of frames, and uh, which is even more worse, it has ActiveX. So it is this, what should be automated in this case. Uh, and initial solution was pretty direct. Like you, you should see, find element, click something, see in the browser what, what's going on. Uh, it was done via driver API, which we are all familiar with. Uh, what were difficulties? Uh, interface was very asynchronous, and uh, methods worked unstably. First run, it works. Second run, it doesn't work. I, I should wait for something, but everything is so closed within ActiveX components so that I can't understand what, how to synchronize all this stuff. So there were lots of frames, up to five nested frames in order to reach control. So you should switch to frame, switch to frame, switch to frame, switch to frame five times, and then click button. So that was totally nightmare and impossibility to work is with ActiveX at all. So it stopped all beginnings with Selenium. 
Uh, but uh, the solution was pretty simple. If you will Google just what I can do with the user interface of Siebel, you, I found uh, official Oracle documentation uh, which describes how to write custom code on browser side uh, using Siebel technology. So uh, Siebel logic could be implemented in both sides, on server side and on uh, client side in the browser. So it is API which is provided by Oracle uh, which enables developer to implement custom logic on client side. So well, why not? There is an API. Um, it should provide some abilities uh, which I need for my tests. Examples. So um, I got standard remote web driver. It implements uh, JavaScript executor. Um, and uh, instead of clicking buttons, I started to invoke methods, uh, internal methods uh, uh, from Sybil, from the browser. So using JavaScript executor, we can execute any JavaScript. Mm, so it looks ugly, of course, because I need to concatenate lots of strings and it, it, there is a JavaScript within Java code. But anyway, it worked. So it worked in this simple case, or if I need to provide some parameters, it was a bit huger. But uh, all these uh, JavaScript pieces were encapsulated within the cores of the framework. And um, outside, it was like regular script using business logic. I need to do this, I need to do that. But internally, it, not, it, it didn't click buttons. It invoked Siebel API methods. Result was quick. I didn't need to switch to frames. Uh, it was reliable because uh, if this API is not reliable, this means that Sybil provides API which don't, works unstably and even if developers wanted to implement something and the API unstable, uh, the result will be unstable as well. And it, it was synchronous. So it was really good results, but of course not without problems, <laughs> as, as you might feel. So firstly, methods were synchronous. And uh, if some method invocation um, causes alerts, and uh, this can be done simultaneously. So I can't finish JavaScript execution until alert is not closed, and vice versa, I can't close alert because, uh, because JavaScript execution is not finished. So uh, how it was solved? It was solved uh, via this uh, feature, Windows set timeout who is familiar with JavaScript, who knows what it, it means? Uh, please. Uh, you. Uh, so, so setting the timer, giving it a certain length of time on the window uh, before it uh, expires? Yeah, so we are providing um, some JavaScript and saying, hey browser, please execute this piece of JavaScript after a certain amount of time, but uh, without under some background. So. What, what we said that, hey, JavaScript, execute please, but after zero milliseconds. So it is like uh, multi-threading in JavaScript. It looks not so obvious, but it works. Um, we lost 100% in user simulation because uh, WebDriver concept is designed in order to simulate end user behavior. When we are calling JavaScript, uh, we, are losing, we are losing it. But at the same time, the whole user interface, uh, it wasn't written by our developers. So it is generated automatically by Siebel. So it, it was tested by Siebel. Uh, it was tested by millions of users of this technology. And why I need to, to do it one more time? So that's why it, it is disadvantage, I understand, but it is not so critical comparing to the situation when we can't do automation at all. So it was first case about the technology that you don't know, uh, but <laughs> it works. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, let's talk about jQuery. Uh, here I have uh, actually two questions for you as, as, as an audience. Who knows on which technology your user interface is built? So I see about 50% of the audience. So uh, this is, uh, if you don't know, you should know. So that's uh, the idea of this approach. So it is the moment where you should even start. You should understand what is uh, under this black box that you are testing via Selenium. So um, 
I selected jQuery as an example, which will be more interested for everybody, uh, because uh, official statistics shows that jQuery is the framework which is which presents on 60% of uh, current web, almost more than a half. So whose site is built using jQuery? So from 50% uh, who knows, 60% raise the hand. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about jQuery. Uh, how we can use jQuery and jQuery API in order to enhance our test. Even if you don't have jQuery API, you can uh, put it into your site. So it, it, it could be injected on runtime. So the first thing that is really good, and it's, uh, there are lots of examples of this in the internet, it is about synchronization. If you want to understand whether the uh, user interface is already rendered or not, so you can check this property. Uh, this example is in, uh, first previous examples was in Java, this is C sharp, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so what we're trying to check, we're trying to check internal jQuery property active to be zero. It means how many active operations jQuery uses. And uh, if your developers are not uh, walk around in these uh, jQuery things, so this indicator will show that, okay, you use interfaces rendered and uh, can be, the next operations can be done. Uh, next one. Let's stop. Oops. It looks like. Space. What's going on? Sorry for technical issues. Just a second. I will reopen it. Oops, 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 where we are. Oh, finally. So, uh, in order to interact with uh, JavaScript or uh, with jQuery API, you need to use internal jQuery objects. So jQuery objects, it's not uh, regular web elements, it's not regular DOM nodes. So you, we need to know how to convert from, or how to switch from web driver to jQuery and vice versa. So it is a piece of code on Python, but which shows how to get jQuery object and convert it to web element. So we are executing script trying to find element by ID and uh, this dollar commas or slash or hash. So up to the dot get zero, it is a standard way in jQuery to find object. And then we're converting it to regular DOM node and returning it to web driver. So, and then it's regular web driver object which way we can send keys. So as we used to it is, this script is really replacement find by ID. So it is the same, but using jQuery. Uh, and vice versa, if we found the element, or we can put it, or we can provide it to JavaScript using uh, parameters uh, of JavaScript execution and uh, using dollar brackets, we can get uh, JavaScript uh, Oh, we can get jQuery object from a web driver object. So it is the same example which uh, sets the value for input, which was found by web driver, but uh, input itself was done using jQuery. Uh, so is it clear? Just its basis uh, where next example I built. Going next. Uh, the question yesterday was about how I can find ah, contains, about contains. Yeah, so contains is a method from jQuery and uh, visible as well. If we want to find element by ID which is visible, so it is an example. Uh, so, and trying to do send keys, it will not work. Actually, we will got an exception, it will not work, but we can convert the same to jQuery. So we can find element by uh, any pseudo classes from jQuery which are available and then use this as regular JavaScript, uh, as a regular web driver objects. So that uh, allows to do all, to, to use all the power of jQuery in order to locate elements. Uh, another example is if I want to get parent element of, uh, I can do it using XPath, but if not, I can use, actually I can use any method of jQuery and one of useful methods is to parent. So I can, uh, I have uh, my web element, 
Then I convert it to Java um, jQuery element and get it parent, and then return back a uh, corresponding uh, web element which fits to this jQuery element. So it is an example how to handle it. Even if you have something more complex, like calendar. So a regular way how to pick date in calendar is to open calendar, select year, select month, select blah, 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 all this stuff. Hey guys, this calendar is retrieved from standard jQuery library. It was tested. We know that it works. So why don't we emulate and use it in order to do all these month selections, all this stuff? So it is an example how we found a calendar by ID and then set date using jQuery API. Without all these synchronization things, without all this nightmare, without all these algorithms. Uh, thanks to Alexey Baranzov, who is one Selenium committer who provided this example. But it is not something uh, magical. You can go directly to your documentation of your library and see how to set this date. This example is really not from, uh, is not something extraordinary. It is standard method from jQuery. Open Google, open jQuery and see how it works. So it, it is not something which I really invent, invented. Even if you have custom controls. So it is example from my project uh, uh, where we need to select a country for user. So we have custom controls for gaming combo box. That's funny thing, of course, but um, in order to select a value in this combo box, I need to click, drop down, show, I need to scroll to set a piece of code, to set a place, because there are lots of countries, and uh, click, and then wait while this, section, uh, uh, sh um, this value is applied. All this stuff should be done, and uh, I believe it will work unstably. And I will debug a few weeks in order to make it work. But uh, what we have done, we opened sources. Uh, you can do the same yourself. So you can see that even the developers of custom com components, our developers, provided the description how to suit it, set this value programmatically. So they wrote, if you want to set this value for this control, call this code. That's it. Uh, and uh, it's really an example how to select the country in this control. So find and uh, call the value which was provided by documentation. So it is even if you have custom. Of course, you should write some additional scripts in order to, uh, some additional tests in order to test your custom con component using any un unit test tool. But for your end user test, it doesn't matter because you tested already control this, uh, this uh, widget or whatever you have, and uh, there is no need to retest it every time when you are selecting value in combo box. So summarizing, uh, the general schema looks, looks like looks the following. We have tests, we have visible user interface uh, and browser who works with uh, this user interface via HTTP protocol. But our visible in user interface is built on some libraries. We're not writing JavaScript code from scratch anymore. Uh, if you do, there, there are maybe questions to your development. So, uh, and library, in addition to some core and components, has API. And using JavaScript executor, we are calling these API methods in order to interact with the uh, user interface. So that's general schema how it works. Another way to apply this approach is to work around existing web driver issues. Of course, web driver has defects. So, for example, click doesn't work. And uh, as yesterday already mentioned, we can do the same via JavaScript. So th this is pretty simple example. We are calling not really uh, your components API. We are calling um, methods from regular DOM structure. So, but you should uh, use it wisely. So it is really important. Just I, I need to mark it really red. So it is not the way how you should do constantly these clicks. You should not. Because in this case, we are evolutionary. We are coming back to Selenium AC, which was built on really on JavaScript. We are writing new Selenium AC uh, using our, within our framework. So it is just way to work around. You need to do quick release. You know that click works. You don't have time in order to debug the issue, in order to fix the issue. Uh, but uh, you need to have tests green. So only temporary. 
And it's important to understand why standard approach doesn't work. Maybe even you have issue. Uh, it can be the case, but it is rarely reproducible, or I don't know what it can be. You, you should dip into technic technical details. So, and after that, post a bug to, with an example, of course, to Selenium community uh, to, in order to, be, to have it fixed. So, okay. Uh, summarizing what was explained, what I wanted to say to you. Digging into technical details allows us to write more reliable tests. So don't look at your system like a black box. Try to understand what is within it. And uh, you learn in Java, if you don't know JavaScript and you don't know what UI library is used in order to, uh, for, to create your user interface, it is natural next step in order to grow as engineer to learn what how it's built, because we are dealing with this user interface. We should know how, we, how it's built. But we should understand what we are missing and find balance. It's all about trade-off. So um, we are getting something, but we are losing 100% uh, end user simulation, uh, all these things. Thank you, questions. Uh, any questions? It's so, it was so obvious, uh, yeah. Yeah. The question is, so uh, is it good or not? You should, under, you should understand your internals, what is built, if uh, this, oh, what? So the question was about the following. I have two drop downs, and uh, one uh, third drop down is uh, based on first two, and we don't know uh, what way to use in order to understand that third drop down is populated. So uh, the answer is not, there is no common answer to this. You should understand uh, how it's built. So if, if uh, there is no way at all uh, to, so you should use explicit weight in order to see drop down. But in general, it depends on your implementation, really. So if uh, it is pure jQuery, I given an example how to use it. But if it is not jQuery or your development work around in somehow this uh, active, then it will not work, of course, and you need to do something else. So the trick is in, is in understanding what's going on with your, your user interface. Yeah, so the advice was to put even some testing code into your application in order to do repeatable operations. So uh, not to even to call it externally, but to have it within your system and uh, to, am I right, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is a method specially written for s such kind of approach. Anything else, guys? So if not, thank you all.